sometimes it pays to have a casual look around um, of your engine. Whilst I was working on it, I thought I'd just have a little nose around and I found these patches of uh, wet. And um, having sort of uh, managed to trace it, um, it's not coming where you think it's coming from, which it looks like it's coming from this sensor here, but it's actually coming from, from this pipe here. That clip is to blame. Um, it's obviously looking a bit tired, but it's uh, with the constant expansion and contraction of the pipe over the years, obviously it started to leak. So, But it just goes to show when running an old car like this, you really need to uh, keep on top of everything and just keep an eye on stuff really, because uh, you know that kind of problem could leave you stranded um, with uh, you know and then you need to you know you find yourself the temperatures going up and you run out of water and then you've got a whole load of problems and you could actually do damage of course if you ran out of water and didn't realize so they are really a labor of love they needn't be expensive but I think you really do need to know what you're doing if you own one or you just keep sending it in to have it serviced all the time but of course you know, a clip, you know, you wouldn't expect a clip. They can't check every single clip on the car because there are so many of them and they're all over the place. And if any of them are loose, they can cause all kinds of trouble. I actually had one inside on the heat exchanger that was dripping water and was leaking there. And in fact, that one looked like it had never been done up from the factory, bizarrely enough. So, uh, yeah, that's quite strange. Anyway, it's all good fun if you're not a keen gardener and you'd rather be playing with cars. So, uh, and I'm not uh, very green fingered. I'm more uh, black fingered. Okay, well, uh, there's my heat shield which I've made, obviously, just down here, which um, has got sound uh, heat, heat uh, proofing and everything in there. And uh, my other heat shield, as you can see, is just here, which uh, is not double skinned, it's not twin skinned, it's not bolted on yet, that's why it's all loose. Um, it won't make a drumming noise, I don't think, but if it does, then I'll twin skin it and put a heat shield in that too, but I think it's going to be fine. I put a strip along the back here, just down the back there to stop it drumming so it should be fine obviously being a UK um, car it's subject to uh, a lot of weather unfortunately so um, a lot of it is surface um, I would like to you know went and get this pulley wheel off and get it shot blasted and clean it all up really nicely for now I've just done a quickly cleaned it up um, same with the water pump wheel up here um, there's a lot of oil. Uh, I've got the seal leak which uh, needs to be done. I've cleaned up all the front of the engine and everything like that and the belts had a lot of oil on them which is why I'm changing them out anyway even though it's uh, yeah it's three years but you know as most of you say probably go to five if it's not done many miles. Um, so uh, yes I mean they were impregnated with oil so um, I decided to, you know, get them changed out. Something I've done is I've changed out all these nuts uh, for stainless steel um, ones because they were all really corroded. You can see what looks like corrosion on here. It's not that bad, it's fine. It's surface, again, uh, nothing that a wire brush wouldn't sort out, but uh, I'll do all that when I come to do the cam belts. I mean, this, this looked far worse, but you can still see some surface stuff. I mean, you know, again, it's not a concourse car, you know, it's a lot, it, uh, it, it looks nice on the outside. How many people look at their engines in this kind of detail? I expect some people do, um, myself included, but, you know, at some point you've got to take a view on it and say, hell, it's an engine. <laughs> it would be lovely if it was like new, but it's a 30-year-old car, so, you know, you just have to live with these things. Um, the bank nearest the firewall, this deflection here, if I just use my fingers like that, there's a definite um, where it stops and goes tight. So it's loose in the middle there, but it's tight there, tight there, tight there, tight there. With just minimum of pressure, that movement in total from there to there is 15 millimeters. Again, just so we can see in close up, there's the 15 millimeters on the vernier. The other bank is different. If I do the twist test on the same bank, let's see what we get with the twist, thumb and forefinger. Well, it's easily, I can twist it almost 90 degrees across there. So 80 degrees, I'd say, of twist without, without you know, with a reasonable pressure. 
but as you can see in the middle it's very very it's very very loose so I'm guessing that that belt is definitely too loose well I know that belt's too loose the next one is probably more how it should be so the other belt here is the twist thumb and forefinger it's 45 degrees in either direction 45 degrees there 45 degrees there whereas the other one was 90 I can't twist that 90 it's 45 45 and the deflection well there isn't any as such you know applying the same pressure the total deflection doing the same pressure is probably five millimeters and that's it it has quite a dead sound to it if you try and twang it it doesn't play it doesn't play it doesn't have a ring or a twang it's pretty dead although if I keep my finger on it I can just hear feel a very slight vibration I'm gonna get a microphone and see if I can pick it up this is what the cam belt sounds like I've got a microphone in here a Rode microphone just there I'll just move it so you can see it there we go very very sensitive and um, I'll just record the sound of, of what the cam belt sounds like. Now obviously this is a cam belt that's due for changing. Um, uh, it's been on there three years but it's not done many miles so um, it's due for changing but as you guys say you know sometimes it's that you know it's it's actually done um, about what's it done 5,000 miles on this belt so um, here you go this is what it sounds like. So it will be interesting to see, once we get the proper tool on it, to see how that note changes. But if we record the other one, you'll hear the other one won't even play a note. I suspect it will be completely dead. So there you go. That, I think, is correct. That's the belt that we can twist at 45 degrees. And with the thumb and f with two fingers like that has, uh, obviously further down here, I'm measuring it down there, but further down here, um, it has what I would say is about five mil of deflection maximum. Um, obviously, you know, you're supposed to do this while you crank, where you turn the engine. So you turn the engine with a spanner and keep monitoring it because obviously the camshafts pull the belt at different points. So, um, yes, I mean, that's, that's obviously a fact to take into consideration. But this is just a rough thing. So once we get the tool on it and put the new belts on then. Uh, we'll have a better idea of um, what it should actually be. But like I say, this is pre-belt change, so it's just just to see, you know, it's just an exercise to see what's what's happening. I'll now measure the other one. I'm actually going to film me putting the microphone in so you can see it. It might seem a bizarre way of doing things, but actually this is incredibly accurate because this is what that tool does. It measures the frequency of the uh, belt and you're supposed to hit it with a little tiny, you tap the belt with a little, um, well basically a little hammer and um, it measures the frequency. You can hear that very low frequency. I'm going to turn the gain up a bit so you can really really hear it. Let's turn it right up. Let's try that. Now that's funny, isn't it? Amazing how sensitive it is. You'd never hear that with your ear, but you can actually hear it on this microphone. It's a very, very low bass note, isn't it? But um, that is too loose. Let's go again. I'm going to turn the other microphone right the way down, the one you can hear me on. Now, you'll just hear the belt. Like I say, this may seem somewhat unorthodox, but you know, who would do that? But if you don't have the specialist equipment, <laughs> like uh, for, 
tensioning a cam belt. This could be quite an easy way to do it. You know, all you need is a reasonably, I mean, this microphone's not a lot of money. This microphone was like, you know, 50 quid. So, you know, <laughs> you put on a set of headphones, plug the microphone into a video recorder, sit there up with the tensioner, put, you know, put your spanner on the tensioner, tighten up the tensioner, and just play the note. 